Hey, this is Blake with Texas Bee Supply. Uh, we wanted to go over with you guys the different styles of feeders that we recommend. We get a lot of questions about uh, the different options of feeders, which ones are best for your bees, which ones work best for you. And so we wanted to create a quick video to show you guys what we usually recommend for different scenarios uh, to feed your bees. So the first one we want to talk about is the top feeder. And it's just a feeder that goes right on top of the hive. And the nice thing about this one is it holds about two and a half gallons of syrup. And uh, it's a little bit uh, cumbersome sometimes if it's full of syrup, trying to get it off of the hive because it's heavy. But the great thing about this feeder is if you have your bees in an area that you don't go to frequently, so if you don't have them where you live, or if they're in an area that's hard to get to, or if they're on your you know farm 50 miles away, this is a lot of feed you can give your bees at once, and then you can go and leave for two or three weeks and not necessarily have to come back. So if your bees are in a remote area where you don't live, uh, or if you don't want to visit your bees very often, this is a great option because you can put two and a half gallons of syrup in it. And depending on the time of year, you may be able to come back uh, you know, 10 days to three weeks later before they'll need food again. So this is the one we recommend. It just go for distance feeding. It just goes right on top of your hive and then your lids go right on top of it. It's pretty, pretty simplistic. The next one is what we call the division board feeder. And the division board feeder fits inside the hive. And so one thing you'll notice is this feeder is in the hive. I'll show it to you. And it has a, this is optional, but it has a cap and ladder system. So it actually has a little ladder the bees can climb into and drink the syrup so they don't drown. You don't have to have this. There's grips inside that the bees can hang on to. But if you really want to go the extra mile, you can have this cap and ladder system. But once it goes in the hive, only about eight frames fit in this bottom box. If you put, if you try to put a ninth frame, it's just way too tight. And so if you have a division board feeder, you only want eight frames in the bottom box to give yourself enough room to uh, manipulate the frames and pull them out. One key thing to keep in mind is that if you have this feeder in here, keep those frames pushed tight up against the feeder. You want your excess space between this outside frame and the outside of the box over here. And that'll keep the bees from drawing out burr comb in areas we don't want burr comb. This is a great feeder. They, they range from a uh, gallon to a gallon and a half uh, in size. It's a great kind of mid-ground between the boardman feeder and the entrance that we'll talk about in the top feeder. Uh, this is probably the most commonly used feeder. The nice thing about it is it's inside the hive. And so when it comes to uh, bees robbing certain times of the year, um, or if it's a little bit chilly outside, the bees can access it all the time and it's safe inside the hive. Um, the disadvantage to it is that uh, you've got to move, the, uh, the, open the lid, or if you have a second box, you've got to move that second box in order to access it. So that's the main disadvantage of this one is it's a little more cumbersome to get to. Um, the last feeder is the entrance feeder or the boardman feeder. And so this is really simple. It's just a jar with a lid on it that you fill with syrup and it fits right onto the entrance of the hive. The neat thing about this one is that you can monitor the syrup levels from outside the hive. So, um, you know, some people put a, a bottle cap inside of it or a little bit of food coloring so they can see it from a long way away and tell what their food level is inside the jar. Um, it's kind of fun to see, especially if you're new to beekeeping, it's fun to see how quickly they drink it. Um, the disadvantage to this one is that it, uh, it doesn't hold a lot. So it, it doesn't hold a lot of syrup. And so you're gonna have to refill it sometimes daily in order to, uh, to keep the bees supplied with the food that they need in, in the springtime. So, but it is fun and it's also very inexpensive. So, it, you know, if you live right next to your bees or if they're in your backyard, then that's a great option to use and just monitor that, that syrup level. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and let us know. But those are the most common types of feeders and uh, the situations we recommend using them. Thanks.